on on your title uh, so but i haven't seen any abstract more than one page so so follow the requirement of the of the or either a summary executives or an abstract okay so once you finish your uh, summary the next thing is your uh, table of content is very important table of content so the table of content has your divisions and subdivisions of the report a list of tables and the figures uh, very important um, I have seen table of content they are not very good they don't have page numbers you got to have page numbers sometimes people put the hyperlink on the table of content but no page number uh, you can have your hyperlink no doubt about it they, they are fine but you still have a page number i have just recently received one uh, uh, report uh, from my class and this report has no table of content yes um so i mean if 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 i'm a business and i pay you hundred thousand dollar to write a report and i see a no table of content that looks very bad actually it's like you get a french fries and there's no ketchup okay so you must have a table of content uh, in academic writing uh, generally they don't have a, a table of content so that's another distinction is okay um, but if you're writing like a formal report even if you're writing for a non-profit organization like government things like that they still ask you to have a table of content okay so make sure that you uh, who if you're doing for business writing make sure who your contact person is and always good idea look at the sample so for example if you're writing a report for let's say xyz business right um, and so start to find similar reports um, available online or some other format see what kind of what 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 is a format report look like and obviously if you're looking for a journal articles to publish in a journal and obviously you're looking for a very specific journal then there's a lot of articles available on, on that journal so you can look at the sample articles of that journal and just follow the follow the follow the exactly what other articles followed the uh, specific steps okay so that's the table of content and uh, the next thing is your uh, and goes is the introduction the introduction of the report so basically what goes in the introduction is your the uh, basically background information on, on the study um, generally um, um, Basically, you know uh, why this research is important, why you do the research, and generally in the in the background we also uh, talk about talk about the gap, like why you're doing this research, like even even if your business research and you're doing as customer satisfaction, of course you have to explain why this is important for this business, for example. And but if you're doing a writing for to to hope to get published, then normally you want to state a gap why you doing this research what is your contribution in terms of this research why this research is different why this research is unique okay um, and then um, um, so in terms of writing for academic purpose like for university writing or publishing in a journal you would also provide a, uh, a literature review uh, literature review is very very important folks this is so important i know that sometimes we, th we think that if you're doing it for business you don't need to do literature review uh, which in many cases is not not false actually a lot of time when business you you get a very pressing need and you want to do a research and write a report right uh, but what, what i also think is this is the reason you do literature review is for two reasons number one reason is find out has anyone else done this work right if someone else has done this work then why one of my colleagues used to say why invent the wheel you know why you want to reinvent the wheel when wheel is already exists so just use it other people work it's just absolutely acceptable as long as you cite the work right so that's one advantage of literature reviews right and also you kind of keep you informed what's what's happening in the industry right like if you're doing some work and this work already been done and it's kind of redundant so it's kind of waste of time and resources of yours right uh, in terms of academic writing the literature review is so profound i can't even describe how important it is because let's say if you start doing some research and you spend so much time and energy doing some research right and if you haven't done any literature and, and now you want to get published guess what someone else has done this work and someone else has already published that work so all your efforts and work pretty much wasted you see so you want to also want to see what's what's happening what 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 what, what other what what things people have done in this area you are researching for example right um, um one of the research areas which uh, uh, some of you have worked are framing research framing research so 
the message framing is not uh, not a new research obviously but you also want to uh, see into the what is your contribution in this framing research so basically what you're doing is just you're looking at the literature existing literature reading about it and say okay how can you position your research what is your new contribution so again your contribution doesn't need to be a big one it could be very tiny but it's a contribution all right uh, one of the advantages when you do your literature review when you read your literature reviews when you when you review the literature existing work uh, of other researchers what it also help you to formulate your hypothesis so you can able to say that you know uh, for example uh, so there's one research i'm right now engaged in um, one of the research i'm right now doing is on emotions so so we know that there is a primarily two type of emotions negative emotions like negative emotions uh, negative emotion generally like the fear, uh, fear, uh, fear driven, and the positive emotions. Uh, positive emotion generally are the hopeful emotions. So the question is this: uh, which emotions are more more uh, more strong to make someone to make a decision? Is it is it the hope? Hope emotions are important to make make people to make a decision, or the fear or the fear emotions are are important you see what i mean so of course in the both emotions are important you know that like i mean um, um, i'm reflecting on, on the current days uh, you see a lot of people that are not walking on the uh, on the street the reason they are not walking on the street is because the the fear fear that you know somebody might get sick for example so people are you know keeping themselves in their homes and and want to be safe so the fear factor is involved because what if if what if you expose yourself in a in an unhealthy environment so people are taking care of themselves right so that's a fear fear emotion is so maybe the fear emotion might work in this situation but what about the hope how can you how can you uh, use the hope emotions and and still people do what they are doing it you know what i mean so so uh, so um so where i'm going uh, from my this conversation is in terms of hypothesis so so maybe there are emotions for example let's like for example the fear emotion which i just described to you might work in certain situations for example but may not work all the time like we know that we we like we like hope we also like positivity we also like positive emotion as well we like hopeful emotions and there may be some situation which where, where the hopes where the hope hope emotions prevail over the fear emotions right uh, so when you do existing reading and you're doing a specific research for example and maybe you can if you can able to say that maybe this emotion better work for this circumstance and maybe that emotion works for that circumstances and that's the power of the power of the existing literature is and and and, and it is also very possible when you're reading a literature that you get conflicting conflicting information for example i was reading i was reading about the water shortage shortage in the in the, in some countries and one of the way they are taking on the water problem is they're putting a fear in people like the, the so a lot of messages they're putting out on, on in their uh, in their uh, public board public message boards is a fear driven well, the reason they're doing it so that people don't waste water or don't contaminate water so they are using fear the the the, the fear base right but i also find literature where where it's, it's very clear it says that the fear doesn't work uh, as a matter of fact uh, the fear make people to not to do anything about it actually they become so uh, um, it affect them very negatively and they don't do anything about it in terms of uh, when, when the water shortage so they are not really uh, contributing a water shortage because of the fear for example so so you'll find that the literature will find a contradictory information for example and that's very interesting as well so now so based on this to evidence you can make your own informed evidence for example say so maybe in this culture or maybe in this background the this 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 emotion work perhaps in this environment this circumstance this emotion might work so what i'm going through is is your is your is your literature review and literature review help you to formulate hypothesis okay uh, and then of course uh, from there you can very clearly uh, state the purpose of the uh, of the study generally uh, uh, generally uh, the um, these are your research questions you want to ask and address in your uh, in your introduction. So introduction is basically has to be very interesting. It has to be a um, uh, engaging. 
because if you have a good introduction, then people want to read about it, right? And, 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 and also, frankly, if you have a good introduction, people say, oh, wow, look at that. The introduction is very good. So it's much, the racism is good as well. But kind of introductions, introduction kind of sucks, basically. And then, then people say, well, you know, introduction is not that interesting. So why would I want to spend my one hour, two hour time? I mean, honestly, you, you, you grab one journal article, all right? It's like, how I many, five pages, 10 pages? Really, reading a journal article is quite a bit of work. It's not straightforward reading. It's not like reading and uh, reading some uh, some some storybook or some some novel, for example, right? Uh, so, and if you find introduction is boring, interesting intro introduction is not engaging, intro introduction is not interesting, uh, you're not going to read it. I mean, honestly, I many times when I read an introduction of the uh, of the paper, and I find introduction is kind of looks boring, I don't want to spend my next one hour of my life reading that article time is important time is precious we don't have so much time just wasting around and reading some boring stuff so so if you really want people to read this whole stuff make interesting introduction introduction has to be interesting okay this is where you engage people the next next portion of your writing is your body the uh, body uh, body of your research so so what does it include include your, your research design uh, uh, how you design research your uh, data collection methods your sampling methods your sampling plan uh, what sampling method you chose and perhaps your results your results also uh, results go also here as well and supporting tables and figures etc goes here all right so that is your uh, body part so again, uh, in, in methodologies, generally you might have a very specific method. So like this is how you're going to do your research, for example, uh, whether it's an online research or whether it's a focus group or whether it's a one-on-one -on -one interviews or whether it's observation studies and whatnot. Okay, so that's kind of body. So basically you're saying, okay, you introduce very well. You make you make your case that this is the research you want to do, and this is how you're going to uh, do going to do it. So that's the that's that's the body is. Uh, and again, um, in the key finding, uh, when, you, when, you, when you say key finding, make sure that you put interesting analysis which support your hypothesis. Uh, you don't need to put each and everything uh, because people are only interested in the good stuff. Um, uh, but of course, do not lie on your on your analysis, on your finding. Uh, tell the truth. Uh, if, if the result is not significant, tell the truth. It's not significant because the problem is if by mistake, if you don't tell the truth, uh, then again, we lose our credibility and we might even lose some future opportunities uh, in terms of uh, writing reports or publishing reports. Okay, uh, then we have this, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the last section within the, uh, uh, within the body is called research limitations. So this is very funny because uh, sometimes students think that research limitation is basically just to kind of, you know, complain about the research, what they could not do. Really, that's not the purpose of research limitations. The purpose of the research limitations is to talk about future research. What you have done, obviously, we know that, right? Anytime, anytime you take a sample, you're doing research, your research is not, it's not going to be perfect. I don't think any research is perfect. Not, nothing is perfect, okay? Research is also not perfect. But we try to make our very best to do a good research, right? So research limitation, you, you, you think about what else, what else uh, you missed it what else could have been included in it like for example so if if somebody read your research and want to carry on your work what would they do what would they do differently what would they what would they carry on so a good researcher is this a good researcher is who does a research and other people carry on that person research so the legacy goes on that's the that's the, that's a good research is because if you're doing a research and nobody else after after you did uh, followed on the research that mean that research is dead. That mean that research is not interesting. That mean nobody care about the research. So, so generally you want to uh, you want to provide some opportunity for future researchers uh, to to carry on some of the work you're doing. Okay, at least that's the research limitation is. Of course, you can you can talk about uh, other limitation. For example, let's say I did a research on mortgage. Okay. And, and of course, like, you know, being in university, my, my participants were students. And I mean, if you think for a second, how many students own a home, right? Like my research shows that over 80% students don't own a home, right? And so obviously uh, the mortgage is not something student think, thinks a lot. Like when I was a student, the last thing in my, in my mind was a mortgage. I, I never thought about mortgage while I was a student. I mean, maybe 
some people think about it, but for me, I never thought about mortgage, right? So, so, so I find that um, uh, that particular sample to do a study on mortgage is not necessary a a a, a a right sample so then I can talk about that as a limitation but I can limitation not not just make make whole on my research otherwise my research nobody wants to interest in my research just to say that perhaps in future I should consider taking a people who have a mortgage so that I will get a different perspective I mean when I get this perspective from a student about the market it doesn't mean that research is wrong but one good thing about taking a student sample was the sample was homogeneous because everybody in the same board uh, just said 80% students don't own any mortgage so uh, so therefore the results are not that bad actually it's uh, still it's a good finding overall right because that gave me some idea about uh, the students uh, knowledge of the uh, financial decision and then uh, and how good they are in, in in financial decision making for example because it's not just mortgage also a lot of financial question I asked in my survey so so this is limitation perhaps in terms of if I somebody want to do this research same research which I just did Maybe they can consider taking a non-students who who have a who have a mortgage. Okay, uh, one important thing uh, uh, which you uh, need to have finally is your conclusion recommendation. Uh, so what was found with respect to each of the stated objectives? So remember, either you have objectives or the hypothesis or research questions and um, and then um, that's what the conclusion is so conclusion is basically you summarizing your let's say if you have five research hypotheses or two research hypotheses kind of summarizing those research hypotheses concluding them right so uh, so that is uh, so that might conclusion might have your own some degree of subjectivity but do not st stay uh, straight too much let's say if you if, if you if you're writing if, if you're concluding that uh, that you're you're supporting your research hypothesis okay let's say you're saying that the emotional the positive emotional message or the hopeful emotional message are powerful for example right and you just support that right and then you kind of concluding um, your with your own perspective why 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 it is of course you are supporting you are also citing some of the literature you read on the topic but you also sort of providing some 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 life to that uh, that to that argument all right that's conclusion but again do not go too far in your uh, in your writing okay and uh, another thing is this is very important is your recommendations so as I said uh, there is a uh, there is a um, um, uh, if you're writing for a business obviously recommendation is is a key is a very important that you need to provide recommend recommendations because people want to know okay so what would I do how can I move from 3% to 5% or 5% to 10% etc all right so recommendation is very appropriate in that cases um but in generally in in, in the in the academic writing uh, typically we don't really make recommendations we typically our contribute say it's a contribution to the business contribution to the to the existing knowledge so that's kind of recommendation we try to make okay uh, what would we do from there all right and uh, one thing is very important is called references uh in business writing like if you're writing a, a report for a business let's say if you're writing a report for a bank for example normally they don't care so much about the references uh, I'll be honest to you I work like almost 12 years uh, in, in consulting environment I haven't seen any references the only place I have seen references in universities because university professor like me will ask you cite your work references 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 because if you don't have references that mean where, where 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 does all the work coming from right so in academic writing if you're publishing for a journal writing for university professor they want references and make sure that see the requirement i know that in the university here we talk about apa references apa citation format but there is also uh, many other um, format like mls for example or the or the harvard for example so make sure that see the specification so in other words not every um, writing required uh, one citation format there are like uh, probably like a dozen types of citations exist for example like the Chicago, Chicago one MLS and Harvard this is the top of the mind uh, coming to my mind right now uh, and um, and so see what kind of references they want all right and one more thing uh, while I was talking about the, the uh, literature review in the introduction pass make sure you cite it 
cite it and cite it and cite it. If you're not citing it, it's a problem. And my final word of advice for you all is never ever copy and paste from other people's work because sooner or later you're going to get caught, right? Maybe you can get away from writing a paper for your professor and, and if you publish this work and somebody caught your work that you copy and paste it, it's a disgrace. It's a, it's a, it's a humiliation. It's a huge humiliation. You lose your credibility, you lose all the future opportunity, and most probably people doesn't want to hire you also because you plagiarized. This is so important. All right. I understand a lot of time English is a problem in terms of writing. So writing, uh, so uh, writing good English is not a is is not somebody born with. You need to. Uh, Perfect it. The only way you can perfect it by writing it. Writing it, writing, writing it. Every day writing it. Literally, every day writing it. I, I know some of the good authors. I met them personally. One of the secrets they have good writing is they write every day. Like even like 20 minutes every day, they write, write, write. The more you read, the more you write, the better you get at it. Right? So there's no, uh, there's no rhyme or reason of, uh, you know, you have to be in this country to be a good writer. Answer is no. I know a great writers uh, who are not from here. They're from other parts of the world. And their writing is amazing. The only secret they're writing is because they they read a lot and they write a lot, right? I also know that the local writers as well, they're great writers. Again, they have the same secrets, right? So, so okay, coming back to the point number one is do not copy some other people's work. You can, if you are using some other people's work, cite them. If you're literally taking a paragraph from other people's work, quote them, put the page number, Okay, it's so important because the last thing you want to do is just copy and paste someone, pick someone else people work, and then you get caught. It's a huge, it's it's bad for your reputation. And I work. And the good news is one thing about this academic writing is you can hire editors. The worst case, I'm not saying you need to hire someone to write the paperwork. Don't do that. But there, there's a people who can read your work. Have someone to read your work. You can uh, you can hire this uh, copy editors, especially if you're publishing some of the work. So copy editors, they don't write for you. They just simply correct your grammar. That's all they do. All right. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Make sure, make sure your work is original. Make sure work is your own work. Okay. And, uh, and, um, and uh, finally is your, uh, um, by the way, the sometimes reference is also known as the bibliography. Okay. And finally point is the appendices. So appendices, as you can see, the appendices is basically anything you don't have in your main document. You want to put them in the end of the document called appendices. So it could be a copy of the questionnaires, a moderator guide, for example, uh, coding form or tab plan or detailed detail cross tabs, any calculations, any supporting material, any map, anything which goes on your appendices, on images you use. So you want to put them in appendices, for example. All right. And um, um, one final thought is this on your report, uh, on, on the reporting is this. Do not use any material which is not you haven't got permission. For example, let's say if you're if you're using a some bank information, for example, right, like and some some privilege information, for example, do not use it until you have a permission from them. Okay, uh, just like copyright issues. For example, even let's say if you're using some stuff, I know that in law time in in university writing, uh, you know we kind of uh, use this uh, uh, let's say McDonald right quite often. Uh, but if you're publishing some work and 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 some information might not be very favorable light, uh, then uh, then you could be in a little bit trouble from them actually. So make sure that you have permission from other people to use their pictures, the images you're quoting them. So so that keep that in mind, okay? Uh, in terms of having a having a uh, permission and and also. Uh, I know that this may not apply to a lot of cases. Make sure they make sure there's no conflict of interest. For example, right? Uh, let's you know if somebody pay you uh, like a large sum of money and say write me a good report about my PR report, for example, right? And then you have to claim it that yeah the person paid you for that because uh, because again there's a conflict of interest otherwise. So so those are the so kind yeah keep the conflict of interest right away that nobody paid you to write this report because if somebody paid you and you're writing some nice glowing stuff for that purpose and then and then you don't disclosing that that could be a little bit problem so 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 there are some ethics are involved uh, as well and uh, and if you of course if you're doing a research which involving humans make sure you do an informed consent 
and also mentioned in the report that you did open the informed consent before you collected the data. So that is your uh, uh, that is your uh, written part of the report. Okay. Uh, what I want to show you is the next slide I have is the oral presentation. So oral presentation is uh, is very common thing. is also a very important thing. Is basically uh, now you did your research. Now you're going out in front of of your uh, of your audience, in front of the stakeholders, board board. Uh, to present your finding. So uh, so this is a great opportunity to meet people, meet the stakeholders and talk about your research. And I think it's also an opportunity for them to ask you questions as well, right? And also you want to be straightforward with them and present your finding uh, to these people. So what goes in, in the oral presentation is uh, obviously the, uh, the, the material you have, uh, what type of material you're presenting um, in your um, uh, in your uh, in your presentation so um, in terms of the uh, uh, content uh, so there's many things go within the content uh, uh, such as um, um, if you're presenting it you want to make sure that you uh, you grab the uh, the audience attention uh, uh, because um, you want people to listen to you um, because if, if you're standing in front of people for the next 10 to 20 minutes, you want people to listen to you. I mean, that would be very bad. You start screwed up and talking about your presentation and people are on the cell phone the entire time. I've been to one of those presentations. People are not paying attention at all. Uh, that kind of sucks. So uh, what would you do? I mean, uh, I've seen in the class, uh, uh, many of you have used very interesting uh, technique to uh, get people attention whether it's a quiz you do in the end or beginning or whatever you do, but uh, but, there's a, but try to find a way to uh, secure uh, secure audience attention. Sometimes people begin with a very um, uh, interesting question where you engage people to think about the answer, so people listen to you and 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 uh, and, um, and 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 hopefully they respond at the end when you come back to the question again. So. Uh, so there's no right answer in terms of securing uh, audience attention, but something you have to think about uh, when you persist st st standing up, what is it? I have seen uh, sometimes people uh, crack uh, some joke. Joke is always a little bit tricky because uh, they might laugh, laugh at the joke, but may not they may not be interested in your talk. So so it's a little bit, little bit of a tricky. I have seen people sometimes use a clip of a video or a joke or something interesting. I find. I personally find not very interesting. The reason I find them not very interesting is this. Sometimes people play this small clip of video and honestly the videos clips are way better than the person who's presenting the talk. So what happens is when you see the clip and when you listen to the person talking there's like DNI difference and then you right away say man that sucks. So basically you are judging yourself with that clip presentation. So my advice is don't use any video clip in your presentation beginning of the class. That kind of uh, killing your presentation. Most people don't realize that. Uh, I've been to many, many presentations and they play this little clip. I say, oh man, you're killing your presentation. And that really happens. They kill the presentation. So, and and also in, in terms of our presentation, you uh, you want to have a very clear statement uh, statement of, of the study purpose. People know exactly what, what you're talking about. Um, same thing, uh, talk about research methodology, how did you uh, did the research. Uh, key takeaways from the research study is very important. Um, people want to know, okay, what is for me? What what I'm taking away from them? So so you, one of the, this is one of the hook which people love it. Okay, I'm going to listen to you for next five minutes, 10 minutes, what, what I'm going to take away from, from this presentation, from this talk. So that, so you must have that, that, that hook, that, that takeaways for the people. You could say, look, I'm going to give you these three things, one, two, and three. I'm going to give you these two things. So people anticipating to receive those two things. Okay. Uh, and then you offer this um, uh, summary of the ideas, um, might have some action, action plan, action statement. Um, if you are only, if you're presenting on your own, that's not a problem because you have so much way you can uh, engage your uh, talk. But if you're having a group of people presenting, to make sure there is a logical transactions between the group members uh, and the sections, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure that you don't read or talk over someone else's part in the presentation. 
and even if you're presenting on your own make sure that you have a very good understanding moving from one section to another section and yeah and stick to the topic stay uh, st stick to the topic for uh, accurately follow the uh, for your presentation title and the stay on the topic so that's kind of an idea behind this the, uh, and the uh, in, in terms of the content uh, and the delivery obviously uh, a good visuals uh, is very important uh, a good choice of graphics uh, content displayed well I've been to presentations uh, many times where the person apologized to the audience said I'm so sorry my slides my powerpoints fonts are so small or, or they will say something like this oh I'm so sorry the chart is so small but anyway I'm gonna talk about it you see so if you yourself know that your chart sucks so why are you showing this chart to the whole audience you know what I mean people have no sympathy trust me when I'm sitting in the audience and somebody stood up and I start apologizing for their presentation the right away they lost interest I said if you yourself don't like your work why would I like your work you get the point so you got to be very and you should be you should be enthusiastic about your own work and um, and and you must present a good stuff because the last thing one who stood up apologize never apologize in front of the audience for your for your for your content okay so uh, so yeah so even as I said never apologize it's a little bit of in terms of uh, your, your 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 material um, but yeah yeah of course you know if you're dropping a glass of water or something of course you just need to apologize <laughs> things like that okay um, speech clarity and, and vocal audibility um, and again um, um, we, we like and we like energy we like energy and audio uh, from a from present present uh, presenter uh, we like presenter who is clear who, who who whom you can listen to able to listen to so those are important things so make sure that if you are presenting practice it um, um, uh, I had a when I was in a, a long time ago another another university a local in Vancouver and they have this uh, this um, uh, the, the 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 voice uh, the voice coach um, she, uh, she, uh, she 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 work in like a uh, movies and things like that and and she uh, she teaches in the voice uh, how to improve your voice for example and really honestly I was surprised that um, uh, this uh, what I learned from her is that even this film actors and the people in the stage they spend hours to to perfect their voice I mean I took one of her seminar and I was amazed that how much time goes on to just to make the voice good actually like it's not it's basically um, one hour of a stage production is they spend like almost like hundreds of hours on the voice voice exercise even before they go on to the stage and, and, and present their material they two three hours they do the voice exercise it's just like you know before the athlete go onto the track um, uh, he or she exercise a lot then they go track so it's, it's not they start running on a track right off the bed right coming from the bed so the exercise so 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 I was really impressed um, and that uh, some of these performers they practice a lot and that's why they sound great right so I think yeah I think if you have one of those opportunity where you're presenting in from the audience um, take your time uh, because I think every opportunity you stood up in front of the audience is your opportunity to make your mark people want to you want people to remember you I have a, I mean if I ask you whose presentation do you like in terms of professional presentations right so some people stood out for you right the reason why you like them you think about why you like those people right for example and then you if I ask you the same question whose presentation you didn't like it as much and then you see why you didn't like it for, for example so reflect on those uh, goods and and, and not so good okay um, physical behaviors are very important like for example eye contacts are very very important uh, uh, you don't need to you don't need to glare on people but have a, a quick eye contact with the audience's help uh, for example your gestures your posture for example you don't st stood up in a one leg for example or putting up hands in your pocket the entire time or waving your hand up in the air Personal appearance is very important. Uh, uh, we we like a speaker who 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 uh, who dress up professionally, 
uh, look prepared we we respect those uh, speakers um, because we know that this person took time to come and and and, and present professionally for example uh, but somebody just showed up uh, doesn't seem came prepared so you right away make a mental note say well if this person doesn't make an effort to present their material um, uh, and personal appearance doesn't seem very professional then you say I don't know those kind of uh, that's kind of attitude you might have for example so definitely personal appearance is very important in, in professional environment and um, yeah I mean ultimately you want to make a good presentation right and see how can you make good presentation is important so so main thing is this is it's you want people to listen to your presentation and listen to your work and that's important thing is this nothing else matters final thing is this which is overlooked a lot is the time so you always adhere to the time requirement so make sure that you start on time and finish on time if somebody say start on time you start on time always shows up on time and I know that sometimes people say, oh, don't come on time. Coming on time is very important professional setup. If you don't show up, show up on time, I know that we're living in a society where we don't say about you'll come late, things like that. But it goes against your professional conduct, actually. If you showing up late all the time, it's not very good. People don't say that, but you're losing a credibility point right there. Coming up time, doing the work on time is so important, literally, like, because that, that shows you that you're very reliable, you're punctual, you're accurate. Uh, so this is very important. So being on time is very important. And also when you're present, making presentation, um, make sure you stick the time. If it's a half hour presentation, make it half hour presentation. Make it half hour. If it's like a 10 minute presentation, make it 10, 10 minute presentation. Just keep that in mind uh, when you do making, making, when you're making a presentation, if uh, make sure you leave some time for a question answer, right? Like let's say somebody say a 15 minute presentation. So maybe you talk about five minute or 10 minute talk and leave the remaining time for the question answer sessions. It never hurt to leave it early, but it's always hurt if you go over time. Finally, the final thing uh, I'm going to talk about is your question answer, question answers and discussions. I love question answer uh, uh, session because this is an opportunity to uh, to have interaction with the with, with the audience. Um, because now people have listened to your work, listened to your research. Now they can ask a very specific question. So if you're prepared, you can answer the questions. And one more thing is this, right? Well, the reason I said you want to leave some time for a Q&A because let's say you talk about some work and and we know that like you know you spend if you spend three months of your life doing a research there's no way you can finish your entire thing in 15 minutes there's no way I mean how can you how can you do that right but I think the question answer is one opportunity to talk about something you didn't present it in your talk and, and I'm sure people will ask some questions which was not part of presentation but which you did in your part of your research and then you can talk about that stuff during your presentation. I mean, during your question answer session. So this is a great way of um, interacting with the audiences. Um, sometime if somebody asks, let's say you, you, somebody asks a question on the back and you heard the question, but most people did not hear the question, you can repeat the question back. Say, you know, this is what the question was asked, then you can give your answer. So this way everybody can know what the question was. So in other words, repeating a question uh, uh, one more time is not a bad idea, it's a good idea. And again, eye contact. But one more thing you see, keep that in mind. If somebody asks you a question in an audience, when you reply the answer back, do not keep looking at that same person entire time. You look at the person in the beginning, um, note that person, acknowledge that person question, for example, and then move on to the other people. Because the question is from one person, but but the but everybody is interested in that answer okay and final thing about the question answer is is you should never say it's a good question because I have seen people sometimes say, oh it's a good question to one question that means all other questions are not good question I would say every question when people ask during presentation is a good question so never ever say oh it's such a good question you know I mean, in other words, when other people, let's say other 10 people ask question, you did not say good question to them. That means their questions are not good. Generally, when the person says this is a good question, it means they have a good answer, really. There's no such called good question. It's just because they know the answer of the question is. So stay away from this. So try not to uh, acknowledge one question over other questions, right? Thank the, thank, thank the person for the question and answer them as professionally as you could. 
and, and there may be some awkward situation when this question would be very awkward i don't know how can i describe it but if you do not if you do not know the answer you could simply acknowledge say you know what at this point i do not know the answer but i can get back to you that's important is this and uh, yeah and smile be professional because after it's all, all over uh, there there's always some people in the audience who try to uh, give you a hard time let's be frank but but your job is to handle them as professionally as you could and move on because after this over then nobody know about that person who asks the awkward question but everybody will remember your presentation and how you handle that situation because end of the day people will remember you and that's what you want you want people to remember you remember your work so they keep hiring you keep asking you to come back so um, so again so basically to conclude presentation is a practice right so presentation require practice right um, there's so many strategies out there i mean you can stood in, the, in front of the mirror and practice for example i know we don't like to look ourselves but trust me other people look at you people say wow that's great this person is great um, i love to hear from this person okay so so there's so many we can improve your presentation and again every presentation is a great opportunity to put your mark in your work so people will remember you all right and don't I, I know that sometimes when I do presentation in my classes, some students really make a great effort to make a presentation. And I'll remember those students for a very long time. I also know that sometimes sometimes presentations don't seem very great because it's very, very weak. No much preparation goes in it and they come and go. And really, the mark, the opportunity you had for making the presentation is gone. So I would suggest every presentation opportunity you have, make the best you can because this is this is a time you're studying, st 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 standing in front of the class or standing from the your audience make the best you can so that you feel good about your presentation and people remember your work for a very long time anyway and and and, and the final thought about my writing is the research writing part again writing need a practice 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 uh, and it, it it will come back to you it's just, it's just, if you never write and he's thinking, I'm going to wake up 2 o'clock in the morning. Have you seen the movie Jerry Maguire? He wakes up in the morning and he writes his big memo. You want to know the truth? It never happens. Nobody wakes up in the middle of the 2 o'clock in the night and write a big amazing memo. And then he becomes like a superstar. Answer is no. It, it never happens. It probably only happens in the movie. But real life, it's all about practice. You practice, you're perfect. You don't practice, nothing happens. Anyway, so I just want to wish you all the all, good luck to you all. All the best in your uh, research career and uh, and and i'm sure you'll find the research very very beneficial in your uh, academic and your career paths best